Say hi. Say hi, Joey Owen. Say hi, Joey Owen. Hi, Joey Owen. I'm Frank Abdel. You're listening to me, we watch the Worldwide Report every Thursday night at 11 p.m. Atlantic, Atlantic Standard Time, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Joey Owen fights fires. He's a really nice guy. Joey Owen used to work for Vancouver Giants in the Western Hockey League. Joey Owen is a really nice guy. I'm on his podcast every Thursday nights at 11 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time, 7 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time. Mm. Um, Joey Owen podcast is on. CFUR 88.7 FM in Prince George and CKUW 95.9 FM in Radio Station Winnipeg, Manitoba. Joey Only is a comedian plus meteorology. He fights fires. Best luck to you. I'm Frank Don't You're listening to Joey Only's show on every Thursday night at 11 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Say hi, Joey Only. Hi, Joey Only. <laughs> Well, weather it's hot, weather it's cold, weather it's hot, Frankie's got the weather we've got. Wait a minute. <laughs> well, weather it's cold, weather it's hot, Frankie's got the weather, weather or not. There it is. <laughs> Good morning, Prince George, and good afternoon, Winnipeg. This is the Comedy Meteorology Report, your show about how much the weather sucks in Canada. Comedyology, it's a science that uh, myself, Joey Only, invented, and I had the help of fellow, fellow comedyology scientists there, Frankie McDonald and Brandon Houck. We kind of made this show about how much the weather sucks. I said that, didn't I? You tuned in to see for 88.7 FM, CKUW 95.9 FM in Prince George and in Winnipeg. Welcome to the show, everybody. We have a crazy, awesome full lineup tonight, so I don't want want to waste much time talking about how you should watch the show on Joey Only Caribou Weather Dude. That's see, I got the hat that says Caribou even tonight. Joey Only Caribou Weather Dude YouTube channel. You can find the video version of the show there and maybe, you know, because you'll see things on, on the video version you don't necessarily see, such as Imogen doing this weather report from a sauna. Welcome to my sauna. Okay, it's not my sauna, but it's one where I'm hanging out outside. Here's your weather update. Outside, pouring rain. Soggy, wet, dreary. Everything is miserable and gray and blue and wet and gray and miserable and blue and wet. And everyone seems miserable, but I personally love it. I spent all day outside, which is why I'm now in here. Otherwise, I'd be outside still. Uh, okay, I spent half the day outside. The other half the day was on firearms range uh, at the gun range, just uh, living the pew pew life, doing some training, which is super fun, and um, passed all my tests. So, this is awesome. Uh, coming up later this week, I'm going to be doing a tactical driving course, and the fun of that is that it's going to be pouring rain, so I'm going to be doing uh, crazy driving tricks in the rain. Can't wait. It's going to be awesome. And I'll probably have a little to talk about on the next show right now, just a little uh, update of what's coming up. Oh, and I'll let you on the cover of uh, Paris Fashion Magazine. So that's kind of a fun update. It's a little surreal. Got the message last night as I'm prepping for gun training today. Novelty factor, man. It's all about the novelty factor. Anyhow, see you on the show. This week, we're going to have uh, some special music because all of you people who uh, are stuck in the cold weather that's coming, you're going to wish you were in Mexico. So, this week, our special music interludes are by Mexican Fusca. Y doy todo mi amor por mi nación, mi México, de donde soy. Echele mi mariachi que quiero celebrar, traiganme mi tequila o traiganme un mezcal, que esta noche es larga y acabo de empezar. Aquí la soldadera como yo no hay otra igual, cualquiera que se nos ponga. Conmigo se va a topar, pues vengo bien armada y nunca me voy a rajar. Así es la mexicana, siempre dispuesta a luchar. Arrímese mi villa, vamos a festejar. All right, everybody. Well, you know what we're waiting for. We're going to wait to talk to the man himself, Frankie McDonald. But first, let me introduce all our guests. We got tonight comedian Glenn Foster. He's that Canadian guy. He's out in Ottawa. He's going to be reporting on the weather from out there. We have also a special guest, Martin Howell. He runs a show on CKUW Radio, 95.9 FM in Winnipeg. Can't wait to talk to him. And we have our panel of comedologists. Of course, Frankie McDonald, the man himself in Sydney, Nova Scotia, is here. 
And that's what the show is primarily about. And Brandon Houck is here, our Western Canada weatherman. On top of that, we got uh, a meteorologist, Image Cookie Bailey, who's in Victoria. We got Hilding Donaldson in Grassy Plains, British Columbia. Joe Stover, who's also from CKUW, has shown up tonight. He's in Churchill, Manitoba. Pete Galenko sitting down in Colorado. We'll talk to all them. Of course, featured guest, Glenn Foster, that Canadian guy. We'll get to him in a couple minutes. But first, Frankie, the weatherman. How you doing so far this week, Frankie? Do you think you can find a, a less windy place? I'll be back. Okay, Frankie, we'll be back. Frankie McDonald. Let's go right to uh, Ottawa, Ontario, where we got that Canadian guy, Glenn Foster. Glenn Foster, how's the weather in Ottawa, Ontario right now? First, let me just say I love this concept of of Canadians talking about the weather. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> it's a so Canadian thing to do. Uh, we got negative. I feel like like a, a, a bit of a, a you know shabby here. We got a, like a shabby minus seven compared to the minus forties and everything going on across the across the country. So we got a minus seven. It feels like though. It feels like a minus thirteen. But I'm indoors, and it feels like I don't know uh, about uh, twenty. So, uh, what is you know the whole? It feels like is 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 it, is it minus seven or is it minus twenty? What is it? I don't know. I think it's like uh, well, I'm not outside feeling either of those temperatures, so I don't know uh, right now. But I do know today uh, that uh, I woke up to a fair dumping of snow. I'd say about a foot in the driveway with some drifting and stuff, and uh, my snowblower broke. And uh, the bigger miracle is that I was able to take it apart and actually repair it. So I'm actually, no. yes, quite proud of myself today for that. That's like such a, a it's a Canadian uh, brag for sure that I fixed my own snowblower. Now, I mean, I've uh, had trouble like fixing a, a shovel sometimes. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I was quite, quite, uh, quite impressed with myself as it were. So what's the weather like when you're doing a comedy show? Well, this is the thing uh, about comedy in Canada is because we only get two decent months of, of summer a year. Uh, most comedy tours happen in the winter, right? So, you know, I'm going up to uh, Sudbury next week and, and Elliott Lake and Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, and I haven't actually toured in a while. So I thought, why don't I start with, you know, Northern Ontario and some really dicey driving that I, you know, depending on what's coming in, if anything came in, like what came in last night, uh, next week is going to be a problem. Frankie, the man. Frankie, the man. Who? Frankie. Ladies and gentlemen, Frankie! Oh, right on, Frankie. You found a less windy place. Tell us what's been going on there. It's so windy. It was really windy because a big low pressure system that hit Texas on Tuesday brought tornadoes in Houston, Texas. Brought a lot of tornadoes in Houston, Texas. Brought a lot of thunderstorms and severe weather with trade cables. That brought a lot of snow in northwestern Arkansas, Missouri on Tuesday. Then advanced on to Illinois, brought snow in Chicago. Brought a lot of rain in Richmond, Virginia on Wednesday. Brought a lot of snow in Toronto, Ontario on Wednesday. In Montreal, Quebec, and those places brought a lot of snow. In Quebec City, Bonaventure, Quebec, where Monica is at. And Gaspé, Quebec had a lot of snow changes in rain, including Per Se, Quebec, and those places, including Ottawa and Ramouski, Quebec brought a lot of snow and things like this. As in Sydney, Nova Scotia, it was really windy and rainy. I went to way higher earlier in the day. Brought high winds and heavy rain in Sydney, Nova Scotia. Wind driven rain, sideways rain, howling winds, and things like this. It was power went out in some areas in my area. There's the power went out close to my house. It's on a different transformer. It was really bad in city earlier today. Wind was howling so high. It was mighty wind in my area. City knows goes right now. Wind was so high. So they had a tropical cyclone in Madagascar. Brought high winds, flood, rain, things like this. It's going to bring really windy conditions all across New York next week. It's going to bring polar vortex in the Cayman South area where Jamie Club, aka Clients of Club Podcast. It's located in Cayman, Ontario. They're going to bring polar vortex in eastern Canada the next week. Temperature's going to be so cold in City Nova Scotia this time next week. 
and then, and then uh, not this weekend, but the following weekend, it's going to be brutal cold in Sydney, Nova Scotia, all across Eastern Canada and the United States. It's going to get snow in Vancouver in early February as well. It's going to bring really cold temperatures. And then an earthquake somewhere in Greece, and it did some did a lot of damage and things like this. It was really, really windy in Regina, Saskatchewan right now. Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, not only Nova Scotia, but Saskatchewan's really windy. So is New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, Newfoundland, parts of Quebec, and Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and Alberta. Because you shock winds that happening in Alberta right now. Is this the worst weather you've had in Sydney, Nova Scotia since the Hurricane the Fiona? Weather, yes, worst weather in the world up in Cape Breton Highlands. 250 right. mile hour wind gust in Shady Camp. So up 5,000 feet in the mountains is that's when... Uh, yes. Totally. Frankie, what's going on in South America? Caused a lot of... In Central America, South America, the rain and thunderstorms, so a lot of rain in Venezuela, Brazil, northern Brazil, and Venezuela, and Colombia... Ecuador, Peru, and those places, they're bringing a lot of monsoon rains in. And a lot of rainy season thunderstorms are raining. Ecuador, those places, in. and then the Amazon rainforest, they're bringing lots of cold weather and snowstorm in Sapporo, Japan, including Tokyo, Japan, Kyoto, Japan, are bringing snowy conditions in Japan right now. It's really bad in Japan. South Korea is really snowy. So is North Korea, five yards, South Russia, so cold there. Because Siberia is so cold, even. Really, temperature went down to minus 50 degrees Celsius in northeastern China. Is it cold out in Antarctica? In Antarctica. It's cold outside in Antarctica. It's really cold in Antarctica. It's starting to get some darkness there right now. Down below Antarctic Circle, they're starting to get darkness for the next few months. McMurdo Station, Amazon Scott Sopo Station will begin 12-hour daylight, 12-hour darkness on March. 20th, 2023. Ah, Frankie, what's the weather doing in outer space? Oh my god, the aliens are here! What's that noise? Sounds like a flying saucer is coming. <laughs> There's a dozens of aliens coming from planet Sedna, Eris, Ceres, and Quarwar. Right now, up in Mars, they're bringing very, very, very powerful winds. Much more powerful winds than the planet Earth. Mars winds more powerful than the Earth. So the wind yeah. chill is much higher on Mars then? Is that what I'm getting? Because yeah. of the because of the, the intensity of the winds. Yes, but it doesn't have, doesn't have oxygen up on Mars. People can't breathe up on Mars. What's the weather like in South America? That's Martin Howell, our other featured guest. What's the weather like in South America, in Argentina? Down in Argentina. Right now in Argentina, it's getting really hot weather because it's their summertime. Another couple of months, their fall starts, including Ocean, Argentina. Then at least we'll be changing colors there in March, in April. Imaging Cookie Bailey. If people could breathe on Mars, what would it smell like? Really bad. You can't breathe. No, but if you could breathe, like, what do you think is yeah, in the atmosphere? No, I get that. But if if you could breathe, what sort of smells do you think would exist on Mars? It smells different up in Mars, but it, people can't breathe up in Mars. Does, would it smell <laughs> like a Mars bar? It smells like a it's Mars not, bar. Not a but Mars bar. Mars is the own planet. Picolanco down in Colorado. I was going to ask, you said there was 250 kilometer mile per hour winds in uh, Cape Breton? Yes, it was. So I don't think that was the wind speed in Sydney itself. That was the wind speed of the Cape Breton highlands, which can go up to 5,000 feet above <laughs> ocean level. So up in the highlands, the winds, and there's not much for trees there. And, and now you know why, because sometimes when those winds hit, nothing can really grow in uh, that climate easily. Any other questions for Frankie before we uh, talk to Martin Howell the, about uh, his show in Winnipeg? The key question is, what's the weather like on the Canso Causeway? Right now, it's even windier on Canso Causeway than in Sydney, Nova Scotia, because it's great next to the water. Canso Causeway is much windier in Sydney, Nova Scotia today. Vancouver, British Columbia is well overdue for a magnitude 9.0 greater magnitude. Frankie, people in Vancouver can't escape major earthquakes forever, can they? People in Vancouver, you can't escape from major earthquakes forever. They can't because it lies on the Cascadia South Oxford Zone, lies between North America, Pacific Plate, and Juan Fuqua Plate, and the Pacific Green of Fire. No pegas tus sueños que tipo en fiesta y volvíle pa' nosotros Hay mucha gente, hay mucho ruido Mi corazón se quita cuando tiro muchos gritos ¿Qué es lo que pasa? ¿Qué es lo que tienes? Enseñame a bailar, a gozar, a disfrutar Que se contagie eso en toda la ciudad Y verás, en días, en rato te vas a escuchar Y consciente, te quedarás Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah uh. I want to talk to Martin Howell quickly Because Hello. he's in Winnipeg and he broadcasts on CKW. Tell us about your show and tell us about the weather in Winnipeg right now. My show is Winnipeg Arena is on fire. 
you could call it a variety show. I play a lot of underground music. Uh, very little of the mainstream top 40 and up there. Uh, so uh, it's, it's very much me discovering new music, uh, but generally within the, the punk, alternative, indie, heavy metal, goth, uh, some bizarre electronic dance music type. So, so I do that for the first 30 minutes. And then, then we have our interview guest of the week. It's it's always someone new every 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 week. I recently did an interview with Leona Boyd. Uh, yesterday I interviewed Rami Mays. I nice. Think, I think uh, coming up this week will be a band out of Montreal. They're like a psychedelic rock band called the Flamingos Pink. They're more uh, famous over in Europe than they are here in Canada. But yeah, it's it's. It, and 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 I ch I change who 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 my uh who my interview guests are once a week. I have a past of playing music and doing touring and and doing, but I, I've also worked for record labels as well and everything like that. And I think the I think the people that uh, the 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 musicians and bands that I I interview, I think they really like talking with me because. I've seen what their lifestyle is like. I've seen what their workplace is like and stuff like that. And uh, it, it doesn't take long to, to realize that I can relate to them and they could uh, relax with me and stuff like that. So usually it's, it's a, it's a pretty buddy, buddy conversation uh, between me or whoever I'm, uh, I'm interviewing. Later in the episode, we're going to talk to you about uh, your comic readings, but uh, your comic readings are awesome, and I do want to talk about that. But first, we do have to get to all the Western Canada weather details. We have Brandon Hell coming up in just a moment. <laughs> What do you got for us this week? Right, fairly intense low pressure system moving across the Saskatchewan. We are right underneath the low level jet here. You can see these clouds just whipping across. And uh, we have wind warnings to the north. Wind gusts up to 90 kilometers an hour today. We could see those winds pick up this afternoon, gusting about 60 to 70 kilometers an hour, parts of the county of Newell. And the other thing is, we had the rain and the freezing rain this morning. That precipitation has now moved off into Manitoba in the form of snow squalls. That's a lot of fun, isn't it? And I'm not done yet. We've got another impulse moving in. That's going to develop some snow across Alberta with that big change in the weather pattern beginning tonight into tomorrow once that cold front comes through. So we could potentially be dealing with some snow probably about two to four centimeters across much of the southern part of the province, five to ten centimeters in the foothills, and in the mountain parks, ten to fifteen centimeters of snow is not out of the question. And yes, it does get much colder this weekend. Uh, daytime highs in the minus teens, overnight lows in the minus 20s. Get ready. Yes. Uh, well, last week we've had all the fog and uh, I kind of got sick and tired of that. But uh, now this week we're above average. Yeah, temperatures uh, reaching at least uh, six, seven degrees for the last couple of days. Absolutely lovely. And uh, now we've got a, a big change in the weather pattern. We've got this big uh, Mackenzie low. We're calling it a Mackenzie screamer as it makes its way through portions of Saskatchewan, producing uh, some pretty strong winds, as Frankie mentioned there, uh, Regina. Uh, registered a wind gust of 95 kilometers an hour and we had uh, some pretty uh, strong winds across uh, parts of east central portions of Alberta and into as I mentioned uh, yeah that is now pushing into Manitoba now that produced some snow squalls earlier today some frontal snow squalls with that warm front we even had some rain last night here and it was kind of freezing rain especially into the uh, areas right around uh, Oyen Coronation as well and now uh, we're dealing with the uh, cold front that's 
coming down from the north with another impulse uh, moving in out of Montana. And that's going to produce a bit of snow tonight and through the day on Friday, which will be the 27th there. And that will mean uh, potentials there for about uh, 10 to 15 centimeters of snow for the uh, southwestern foothills and up towards, let's say, Kananaskis and Banff National Park regions. And that will also mean two to four centimeters of snow for the rest of central southern portions of the province as we go through Friday. And then this cold Arctic air descends from the north with an Arctic high dropping in and the temperatures, especially in the eastern prairies, especially as we go into next week, we will see the overnight lows approaching the minus 30s, wind chills at around a minus 40. 40 and even colder than that uh, for many areas across the eastern prairies. We probably won't get as bad here in Alberta. I'd expect probably about minus 20s, maybe. Oh, yes. Minus 20s, minus 30s. As we go into early next week and then we get a little push of Pacific air that will uh, boost the temperature up just a little bit. So temperatures will be back to near average for at least Alberta and British Columbia. Well, B.C. will continue to be uh, in the influence of that uh, Pacific air and uh, Saskatchewan, Manitoba. Looks like it's going to stay cold all next week. And I got to tell you, why did the uh, what did the uh, snowman use to get to work? Well, he rode his icicle. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, see, even at Prince George, like compared to the last uh, cold snap we had, minus 21 expected Saturday night, minus 18 Sunday night, minus 20 with chance of flurries Monday night, minus uh, 16 chance of flurries. And we're through kind of the darkest part of the winter. So, I mean, is this the last real good cold snap we get? And it's it, and considering that we had minus 44 knocking here in December, are we going to complain? Never. Brandon has the books bandits doing. Oh, yes. Brooks bandits. Well, I got a couple of good stories from those Brooks bandits here. So uh, last week, uh, well, we lost badly. We won't talk about that game on uh, Friday night there. But then uh, Saturday, it, they got on the bus to Canmore and we uh, uh, won that game five to one. And th this is a pretty interesting story from that broadcast that night. Uh, so a kid was not happy that we beat their team, the Canmore Eagles. So while we were again. broadcasting the post game show again, yeah, again. Yeah. <laughs> so while, while we were broadcasting the post game show, this kid came out of the crowd, walked up to uh, our broad, our play-by-play uh, -play broadcaster, Nathan there and unplugged the tie line from the wall and walked away and dropped him, dropped us all off air for a second. So I had to hop on the air and finish off what he was talking about and then he came back on eventually and he told as we were in commercials he's this kid came up to me and just unplugged the tie line <laughs> we, we sat there just laughing for the rest of the broadcast there and then um so. and then we won against fort mcmurray uh last night actually we played again last night so that was another 5-1 win over fort See, mcmurray when there kid. When I was a kid, I would have got beat up for doing that. And I would have tried <laughs> to do it anyways. That's the thing. Brandon Houck, thanks very much. Stick around. We got more of him coming up. But let's go in a minute to Joe Stover, who's up in Churchill, Manitoba. Esta es mi tierra mexicana, cabrones. No festejamos al gobierno. Conmemoramos al pueblo que nos quiso dar libertad. Porque la guerra sigue viva. Viva México, México vive, México vive, día muerto, no festejamos, luchamos por el pueblo, México vive, día muerto, papá mi gente que muere en el desierto, México vive, día muerto, sigue la guerra contra el pinche gobierno, México vive, día muerto, chingue a su madre, el pinche peña nieto. Joe Stover, up in Churchill, how do you do review on CKUW, how you doing? review it good 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 uh good to see everybody good to see uh johnny sizzle there too hey martin how you doing hey good 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 it is cold joey we are under an extreme cold warning here in churchill and uh they're calling the next couple of days uh as brandon said getting getting nice and chilly right now uh as of the date of this recording which is a uh, the 20 whatever what is it the 26th today who knows? Um, anywho, yeah, it's uh, about minus 28 right now. And uh, we're looking at probably some minus 40 to minus 50 wind chills 
over the next couple of days. And uh, without the wind chill, we're looking at, you know, some overnight lows of, you know, minus, uh, minus 37. Oh, so it's, uh, <laughs> we're getting there. I mean, it's, uh, it's certainly not the coldest that it can get up here, but uh, like, let, let's get real here. That's pretty uh, uh, bloody cold. Trying to get uh, back into the saddle here. It's uh, it's been a very very busy uh, time since fall, and uh, just working sporadic hours and just trying to trying to pump the show out as good as I can. And yeah, so it's uh, it's been it's been a bit of, bit slow going, but I'm hoping I'm hoping uh, now that I'm back back home in Churchill, I can you know I've got all my studio equipment with me, and I can get back to you know, making regular shows because I've certainly been missing making, making radio. And especially with, with CKUW, it's, it's such a, such a strong brand in, uh, in Winnipeg and in the, in the music scene with, with hardworking folks like uh, Martin, Stu Reed and Kent Davies, and ju just to name a few of the, of the mm -hmm. great people that, that do CKUW. I'm sure the same can be said for a uh, good old, uh, Seifer in, in, in Prince George and like a lot of other community campus radio stations across the country. Anyway, I'm rambling, but uh, yeah, hoping to get back in the saddle soon. And um, yeah, so that's really, that's really what's new. I'm it's uh, here in Churchill. I've been, been away kind of the last, last couple who, of months, it seemed kind of either in, Yeah. Well, I've been either in Winnipeg or uh, Windsor, Ontario, which was, Windsor was was very nice. I got to go to Point Pelee, the uh, southernmost uh, point in mainland Canada, which is just 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 below the forty second parallel. And uh, my girlfriend and I were enjoying this nice open water in the middle of December, and we were both taking it in, knowing full well that we were going to be back in Churchill very soon, where there would be no open water, probably until. Oh, the middle of June or so. Which is which is what you want for the polar bear's sake. <laughs> for the polar who play dead. No, uh, polar bears eat dead things. I want to spend uh, quite a bit of time with Glenn and Martin uh, as we go through the show, but I still haven't talked to Hilding. We haven't talked to Pete and we haven't talked to Imogen yet. So let's get quickly, if you can. Pete, um, you're at Ice Sculptures right now. Pete Glenn. I am. I am. Let me hop out of here. It looks like winter wonderland out here. Uh, but anyway, check it out behind me got all the lights up still and there is an international i'm gonna try to get down to this without sliding and falling it is slippery this path well if you do slip right. and slide uh, you know, but, that, that's great yeah radio just make sure you but anyway know, uh toyota is sponsoring an international ice sculpture contest out here and last time i was here they weren't quite done yet and there's a lot of different uh, teams, including a Team Canada. So let me try to run over here, make this a little bit quicker. Uh, it is about 15 degrees outside uh, Fahrenheit. Colder than a pair of polar bear's toes or polyester's heart. <laughs> I don't know which way you want to look at it. Pete's running to the ice sculpture. Oh, uh, yeah. They're still working on this, so we got, we are going to get some live action footage over here. Shout out to Toyota to the there. They're so they're a little, uh, oh, so check man. it out. There's, uh, they're still working on them. Oh, wow. But they is got, that a uh, festival? They what got is the that thing? Describe the object. That's a strange object. That, yeah, that was a little bit more abstract. Uh, Modern here snow. We got, uh, there's Team Mexico over here. Mexican Fusca. There's just there's is pretty cubic. Uh but that I like, uh, we got uh, like a dude coming out of the ground. <laughs> you got, uh, yeah, yeah, over there. Did, I don't know. It's kind of like Chetwin, British Columbia, when they do the chainsaw carving. And there's just what? I thought this was yesterday. They had the United or the two days ago, they had the United States. Flag. Maybe the flags are just random. I don't know if this though that shows it off. The all right, I was confused. I thought it was Team USA, but it's actually Team so, Italy that has this cool nautical theme. 
So we got a bunch of whales coming. They're like diving into the ground. All right, you know, yeah. I'll put myself on mute, and I want to see if I thought team I thought find the best one. one. They had a Canadian flag up here, so let me check it out. Okay, so we'll come back to Pete Glanko. He's on an amazing ice sculpture there. Hilding Donaldson, if you could, Grassy Plains, British Columbia. What are you saying on your uh, daily weather reports today? Well, it's kind of interesting. We've been having this warm weather. It started for us even before it did for anybody else in Canada, you know? Like, we haven't had anything below minus four since January 1st. And uh, what happened this past week was kind of interesting. Last Saturday, we started having a southerly wind, and it warmed up even more. It stayed above freezing all week. But the wind persistently every day got a degree further west. And then now today, it was from the northwest. It's just like it was make, like the wind direction was in a circle. It, it's a funny thing. I've never seen it happen that the wind stayed warm, but it kept moving different angles like that. So that's kind of the interesting thing that happened this week here. He's a swirling around in grassy plains. Imogen, you've been shooting guns. Good morning and welcome to Pitch Meadows. I am at the DVC Indoor Shooting Center. It is another dreary, gray, awesomely spongy, wet day on the lower mainland. Uh, it was raining this morning, so we had a little bit of respite from that, so hooray for the break in the damp. Now we have all sorts of other kinds of damp to deal with, but I'm going to be indoors all day uh, doing some firearms training. Can't wait. This is going to be awesome. I would send a video of that, but no cameras during training. It's just not a thing they allow. All right. See you on the show. Hopefully we'll get more rain before then. <laughs> Hopefully. Inevitably we'll get more rain. See you soon. Yes, I have. I've been shooting lots and lots of rounds, living the pew pew life. It's actually pretty awesome. Um, I just finished a uh, course using uh, handguns. Also did some shotgun training today. Lots of target practice, timed practice, sort of creeping up to stuff that would lead into doing speed drills and speed training. Um, there was also a component on low light, low light target shooting, as well as basically shooting in the dark. Um, lots of cool stuff going on there. So that is our run through of all the meteorologists so far this week. We got this one is pretty cool, but so I just walked like around an, and it turned what out is that, all like the an flags old man up there face? are actually random U.S. Can you artists. Describe that thing for the radio listeners, please. All right, we got some bearded man here, God of Snow, son of Sif, stepson of Thor. Oh my God, so that's pretty cool right there. It is a little bit too cold for me, so I'm going to head back. And I checked around, and all these flags up here are completely random, and Team Canada doesn't actually have an entry. And neither does Team Mexico. I thought that was Team Mexico, but that was Team Germany. That just was half their, their flag was up there, but on the side. So I got everything a little bit wrong. I'd be impressed if Mexico had a, a snow sculpture team. <laughs> but I put up a flag up there. I, I'd be I'd be impressed too. That'd be that'd be cool. That'd be like the Jamaican bobsled. I was going to say like the, the Jamaican bobsled team. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they just put up a bunch of random flags, and then the actual statues have plaques in front of them that show the. Anyway. Okay. Well, let's hear some Mexican fusca. <laughs> And we're back. Glenn Foster, you must have had some insights about the weather over all your years traveling across Canada. You don't get a name like that Canada guy without... Uh, <laughs> Without thinking about things that Canadians think about, which is uh, obviously high on the list is going to be the weather, I'm sure, right? Yeah, I'd say the the most snow that I've ever seen in my life was uh, downtown Moncton. And I forget uh, what the year was, but I remember the snow banks were so high that you could not see the buildings downtown. You could not see the storefronts, right? So what they did was they would carve a little shelf in the snow bank and like say the uh you know comp the paint company would have all these cans you know paint the name of what bu what business was behind the snowbank right 
and and I remember going to an instant teller, and it was like going through like a, a like a tunnel of ice, you know, like a like a, a, a ice maze type thing. Because it was just crazy, and I've never seen that much snow in my life. And I live in Ottawa now, so that's saying something. <laughs> uh, Ottawa is sometimes quite a miserable place. Well, it did get our fair share of snow because we're in a valley, right? And, and the weather sucks too sometimes. Well, yeah, it can. It can suck all year long, in fact, because we, we got all the moisture settles in the valley. Uh, and uh, so you can sweat your butt off in the uh, in the summer. And then in the winter, you can freeze your butt off. So really, it's amazing anyone has any butt at all. The, the numbers of comedians that are on the road constantly in all kinds of weather, and there's been some people die over the years, but not a lot when you think about the number that are out there all the time in just horrific weather, for, you know, sometimes. So one time we were driving... Uh, to uh, Stratford. They had the Shakespearean festival there. Which, that's right. That's all. Here's an interesting thing about which Stratford. Which reminds me of this show. It's Yes, very theatrical, very theatrical. So here's an interesting thing about Stratford. They uh, had a huge meth problem, and I don't know if they still do, if these things go away or not. But uh, uh, and the re do. I'm going to the bet they do. But the reason was because uh, uh, someone like a Breaking Bad type dude, a cook, uh, taught a whole bunch of people how to cook, right? And they had this huge meth problem. But I always said, on the positive side, you mentioned the Shakespearean Festival, right? So on the positive side, uh, way more auditions for Toothless Wench. Right, right. Can you imagine <laughs> having to like having to sit through Twelfth Night, you know, well, uh, on meth? I don't know. I've never done meth, so I wouldn't know. But we're driving us. We're driving to Stratford, and it's 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 like a, a kind of. It's not a backcountry road, but it's not a main highway, right? Driving, and especially at the time we were doing this years ago, uh, uh, and uh, so it's one of these nights where you can't see anything in front of you. You so basically you're focusing on the the lights of the guy in front of you, right? So we're following very slowly, very slowly. We're all moving in this slow, slow convoy. And then suddenly he just stops and doesn't, doesn't go forward from there. I'm like, well, what the hell? And so I decide, okay. And I, you know, I waited a little bit for him to go, but then it's like, we're trying to get to a gig, right? So I pull out to the left to go around him, right? Because I thought, okay, I'll just go around him. But it was so much snow. We didn't know. We were already on the left side of the highway, and I pulled straight into the ditch, right? Because I was like, I'm going to go around this guy, and I go around, <laughs> bam, right into the ditch, right? Yeah, that didn't, that didn't go very well. Huh? No. And the best, the best snow story uh, driving, I'll tell you, is, is years ago, before cell phones, right? We're driving up to Ottawa. I didn't live here at the time, but we're driving up to Ottawa, me and my friend Lawrence Morgenstern. Dicey, dicey roads, like really, you know, black ice type stuff, right? And people, and as we're driving up this high, this highway, which was the 416, it's now, no, now it is the 416. It used to be old Highway 16, right? So we're driving up this highway and you start to see people in the ditch, like all the various cars in the ditch. <laughs> and I remember looking around going, hey, look at this at. And I didn't even get to finish the word. We flew right <laughs> off the highway, flew off the highway, right? Straight into a snowbank. My buddy Lawrence with like, not misses a beat, right? Gets out of the car and walks to the nearest town which is, I think, uh, you know, we were just coming up to a to a, an, an off uh, off ramp, right? But not that close. Like he probably walked a couple kilometers at least, right? So he walks a couple kilometers. He walks into the first building he finds, which is you know a bar restaurant type place. Finds a tow truck driver, comes back, pulls us out of the snowbank. No damage to the car at all because we just. <laughs> You know, flew off the highway into this big fluffy pot. I'd have done it again if I could, right? It was a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, it was kind of fun, yeah. In, in retrospect, ride. right? Flew off the highway. So we're back on the road. And this, again, pre-cell phone era, we're back on the road within like 40 minutes of going off the road. Martin, also known as uh, AKA the Johnny Sizzle. This week's sampling of, of a comic book radio theater is... 
from Archie Andrews and all his friends at Riverdale High, we're going we're gonna to look in on Jughead Jones, Archie's best friend. Okay? We'll listen to Jughead, number 327. Published, printed, and put out on your shelves February of 1983. Run the clip. <laughs> Jughead in the punk. The punk. The punk. Betty Cooper and Archie Andrews are in the student newspaper office. They are looking out a window at two punk rockers. I, 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 saw, I saw Jughead in a punk outfit. I must have punk on the brain. Back off, nerd. Nerd, nerd, nerd. But, but, but Jughead, don't you recognize me? Calling me by that ridiculous name. My new handle is Captain Thrash. Captain Trash would be more like it. What do you got for Winnipeg weather? Your worst Winnipeg weather. Worst? Yeah, man. That's huge ground. <laughs> um, I I I know that when I when I was a teenager, that a lot of times it was so bad that. I, it definitely made me have to, you know, make the decision to leave. You know, you know what? It, it, it's rather bizarre. It's it, you'd think I would choose a day in winter to be be just the worst of all, but I have to pick a day in summer where it was it was over plus forty and everything, and we're not used to that here uh, for it to get that high and everything mm -hmm. like that. But yeah, it almost it almost felt like. Your your sneakers were uh, were melting when, when when you walked on the sidewalk and everything like that. And um, so you, you do this uh, you do this comic reading. Sneakers melting walking on the sidewalk. That's intense. I'm getting stuck right to the sidewalk. You can't even sneak. When I begin my show, I say comic book, radio, theater, and I give a dramatic reading of a comic book once a week. And it's it's always a different one every week. With one hand, I, I I have a synthesizer keyboard to make the background music and sound effects. And then on the other hand, I'm holding the comic book and then I'm I'm reading it into the microphone. Frankie McDonald, what do you think of uh, our new friends Martin and Glenn? Should he's they, a nice uh... guy. He's a totally nice guy altogether. He's for with this. When we're so powerful in Sydney Mobile Schools earlier. Rock powerful winds with a lot of rain and Sydney Nova Scotia earlier. I'm doing great so far. And Cowboy Frank Del Bowen's coming out in May 2023, according to National Broadway Hall of Fame, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Is I'm Frank also there? an author of book. I'm also an author of book. Be prepared. The Frank and Del got a life sweater and everything. It was published by Nimbus Publishing in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Right now, Justin Trudeau, the CRTC, and the. <laughs> World Economic Forum, climate change, so Greta Thun, TBC, the RCMP, and CC, vaccines. At the same time, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, and Elon Musk, Bitcoin, Black gun control, Meanwhile, Vladimir Putin, the Avro Arrow, and the LRT, China. Here's the thing about free speech, folks. It must be absolute. You're either for free speech or... If you disagree with me, great. Like and share this video anyway. It'll be good practice for you. Uh, Sydney, on the, uh, again on the Canso uh, Causeway, right? And blinding, blinding snowstorm. And I won't say who was driving because people will know who it is. Yeah, sure. and, uh, <laughs> Mr. Hill, what's going so, on? So, so, 
I'm, I'm just the highest win in the world is Sydney Nova Scotia today. Up, up, up to the Highland National Park was the windiest place on the planet today. Right. So we're we're on the highway and this other person is driving and I'm saying, Hey, maybe we should slow down because you know, we can't see 10 feet in front of the car. And no, no, this person is like just a, a terrifying driver to be with. Right. And we come screaming up behind something and I say something cause I didn't know what it was. And I could see it looked like kind of a black hole in the snow. Right. And, and everything was was like like you see a black hole in in science fiction you know all the stars being sucked into it type thing but it was like all the snow was being sucked into this hole which seemed to be about 20 or 30 feet in front of us right and he's racing up behind this thing and all of a sudden they go holy crap it's a truck right the entire back of the truck was covered in snow so you couldn't see that it was a truck all you could see was the wind tunnel around it right and he's racing up behind this thing. That's no, terrifying. Going yes, it was terrifying. It was terrifying. Yes. Absolutely terrifying. That is the most amazing cloaking device ever. Guys, Pretty much. Remember, hurricane Fiona was the worst hurricane that hit last year in Sydney, Nova Scotia. Brought a lot of tree branches down. I had no power for a week. Hurricane Fiona and Ian likely to be retired to safe for coming. Yeah. I've actually I've actually been watching the 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 um, old Star Trek episodes on Netflix, and just the other night I went past the uh, stealing of the cloaking device uh, episode. Oh, exactly. Yeah, so That's you awesome. mentioned you mentioned cloaking device. So yeah, <laughs> I love old school yeah. Star Trek. In in my collection of nerdy things uh, back at home, I have a latex Baylock mask. Do you remember the character Baylock? Uh, which one was he? Wow. The giant floating head played by, uh, what's his pickles? Little brother, uh, Ron Howard's little brother, the giggling baby at the end. Oh, wow. That first, yeah. That was his first TV appearance. And he grew up to be legendarily known as one of the ugliest actors ever. <laughs> He's a phenomenal actor. I know. I, so when I <laughs> watch these cares? episodes, He's ugly. When I oh, watch these episodes, I, I, I check out, out act ugly. I get on Google and I check out the the cast, you know, the extras kind of thing, the usually the space babes to see yeah. what happened to them. Yeah. Right? And uh, exactly. that's it's pretty it's pretty wild stuff actually. So that uh and I keep thinking I might actually see one that I haven't seen. Yeah. But no, so far I've seen them all. So <laughs> <laughs> but it, and it's funny too because they 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 um they have a lot of kind of recurring themes. You know, like bodies being taken over, minds being taken over, kind of, oh yeah, kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, well, it's it's still it's still fun to watch, I guess. One of the fun things about that is, I mean, they had limited uh, makeup artistry skills, yes. but they one of the things, one of the driving factors behind the the you know being having their bodies invaded was uh, Gene Roddenberry's undercurrent of perviness. Oh. Uh, there's a, yeah, he, he actually talks about it on, um, I think it's called Inside Star Trek. It was a, a talk that he gave. It's Gene Ronberry himself talking about this. Oh, wow. Um, the reason the suits were all painted on is because mm -hmm. he basically wanted them naked. Is right. what it, so he was <laughs> trying to make it as revealing as possible. But in the original, in his original uh, vision of Star Trek, it was a 50-50 male-female crew. But now uh -huh. executives told them, oh, Gene, 50% women. No, 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 no. The public won't have, won't take that. It's just not realistic. Roddenberry thought about it and they sort of had this back and forth and, and settled on a number. And I believe it was, I believe that what they agreed on was, I think it was 25% female crew. And Gene in his unholy perviness thinks about it and goes, 25% women. You know what? I think they can handle a 75% male crew. Let's do it. <laughs> so that was part I of love, his casting process was, uh, you know, I, with I, that in mind. And I love, and I love the, every time there's a woman on screen is. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's haunted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and with the Vaseline lens and everything else. They're is, playing like a theremin. Yeah. I think exactly. it's yes, maybe, right? Yeah. Um, well, I play a theremin. 
It's, do you know what? Yeah. Do you know? Do you know what I have? I have the set. I have the blueprints. I have a, the set of blueprints for the uh, Enterprise that I at one point had on my wall, but took down and thought, you know, this might be valuable one day. But now it's probably <laughs> less valuable because it's uh, been on my wall. I've got a. I've got a, an original Walkman, the Sport Walkman. Oh hell came yeah! Out, uh, came yeah. out in 1979, yep. the year I was born. I got that. I got. Uh, Sony Sport. Yeah. I've, I've got a Palm Pilot. I've got uh, the original. Uh, it was a Sony uh, organizer type thing, which is it allegedly was going to recognize your handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> If, if your handwriting is like a five-year-old engineer block print. What it doesn't have is, uh, what you don't have is a Frankie bobblehead. No, I don't have that. Got it. Wait a minute. In weather in Australia, it's getting really hot in northern Australia. If this, this is their summer, their fall doesn't start till March 2023. So is New Zealand. New Zealand's going to get a lot of cyclones this March and April coming. I have cousins in, in I have. Australia. I have cousins in Tasmania. In fact, my my uncle at one point was the chief of police of Tasmania. Wow! Isn't that wild? Yes, That's pretty <laughs> awesome. I can only imagine what kind of uh, criminal misadventures happen in Tasmania. Well, there, you know, do, do you remember that? Uh, do you remember? Um, isn't isn't the place? Weren't they? Isn't that like the, where criminals used to go? Right, exactly. You remember? Do you remember the the uh, musician, artist, whatever, Alexi Sale? Do you remember him? No, you um, wouldn't, because he's. If you were born in seventy nine, is he the one that I was think. in? Uh, was he the comic that was in uh, the Young Ones? I can't remember specifically, but when he went he to Australia, the, he played the Russian, uh, and whatnot, in the British show, The Young Ones. Alexi he, Sale. Uh, sale so he may have i do I not think know that's him yeah but he also had a re really weird video called didn't you kill my brother and it's just him riding around on a tricycle going didn't you kill my brother didn't you kill my brother and his music of course but that's it right so he did this he went to australia and he tells the story he went to australia and at right at customs they go do you have a criminal record and he said i didn't know it was still a requirement <laughs> We're, uh, I, was, I always get so nervous at customs i get nervous so i'm always like sucking up to the customs guy you know it's like did you buy anything yeah i, I got you a shirt i hope it fits <laughs> <laughs> that means like, when the canadians buy stuff in america they have to go to customs they have to declare it then you have to pay duties on it if you buy a certain over a certain amount they got to pay duties at the, the the last resort winner before coming home is duty free shops. You can get Canadian stuff in duty free shops cheaper than you can get it in Canada sometimes. Uh, so do your duty. <laughs> do your duty. And oh also God. the Canadian border is is uh I had a friend uh way, 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 way back that managed to get in Canada through back roads uh without going through customs, but then he got caught by u.s authorities coming back into the united states on the way back but he didn't have anything on him or anything yeah. like that don't but try that too many times and banned from you, going to canada. he got banned from going back to canada and he was fined like five thousand dollars and he was interrogated they kept interrogating him like he was like some sort of but he uh he just didn't have his uh, passport and wanted to go to canada yeah on base guy show there's people from indonesia starting to watch base guy show now People from Indonesia are starting to watch Base Guy Show now because the, the Base Guy Show is getting a lot of Indonesian followers. That's interesting. Indonesian follows watching Montreal's Base Guy. So, Frankie, I, I hey, would Frankie. I would do it in a different kind of weather, in a different season. We should do it Frank four times a year. Frankie, <laughs> should we have Glenn back on? Should we have Martin back on? You have to get Glenn back on your show once again. Absolutely. And Martin, too, you like him? Glenn is a really nice guy. And you like Martin too, don't you? He said that before. He's another nice guy as well. Right Martin, on. So Frank, to your show too. Frankie says, uh, stick it, you know, you're on the group chat. You can come on any Thursday you like. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's usually my weekend. karaoke night, but sure. If I if I get around to actually making any kind of snow thing this year, 
Uh, usually I, I managed to get one like snowman or snow last, last year I made a dragon, uh, and generally I, you know, make something. Uh, but we've only had one opportunity of, of decent packing snow and the next day it all melted. So I spent like all freaking afternoon making this giant snow thing. I didn't even know what it was going to be. I was just piling snow as high as I could. And then, uh, and then it rained the next day and it's like, well, what's the point of that now? So. And you need but, to go down to Colorado there where uh, Pete seems to have the ideal conditions for uh, making snow sculptures and all that. Frankie McDonald, how do people find you on the internet? My Twitter is at Frankie McD. My Facebook is Frankie McDonald. My Instagram is Frankie McD. 984. My TikTok is Frank Down 984. My Clapper is Frank Down 984. My Twitch is Frank Down 984. My LinkedIn is Frank McDonald. And my Snapchat is Frankie McDon. And my YouTube channel is Dogs and Wolves. Is this That's written down somewhere? In his brain. Frankie McDonald, our. Our regular, the meteorologist himself. I'm Joey Only here in Wells, British Columbia, listening to us on C for 88.7 FM, CKUW 95.9 FM, the comedy meteorology show, your show about how much the weather sucks in Canada. This week's special guest, comic Glenn Foster down in Ottawa. And of course, Martin Howell, who's also known as Johnny Sizzle. He's running a radio show in CKUW. Tune into that. And we got Brandon Houck, the radio man who's broadcasting on every station, it seems like, in Alberta these days. He's out in Brooks, Alberta, coming out of 105.7 FM, Real Country Radio, his home station, Imogen Cookie Bailey. She's down in Victoria. Pete Galenko and Hilding Donaldson, who's uh, out in Glassy Plains. He hasn't said too much tonight, but uh, it's always good to have him with us. And that's our crazy panel. That's our crazy show. We want to be on more radio stations, so ask your radio station what they can do. If you want to see the video version of the show, do find us on Joey Only Caribou Weather Dude. And Victor, Imogen points out she's not in Victoria at the moment. She's uh, been she's in a hotel and been shooting guns in the hotel. So that's how you can find her, Imogen.in. <laughs> yes, shooting guns in the hotel. Okay, everybody, that's the show this week. There was so much to fit in and so many clips to throw in. It's going to be so much fun. Yes. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks. Dime, dime, dame, dame. Puro sabor a hierba mala. Cálate conmigo, sigo contigo con el ritmo que se pega como goma. Se te asoma por tu zona, se sazona con un toque como choque. Explote la mente. Mira la manera como navega mi mente. Para detente, prueba de yacente. Confunde tu mirada cuando el humo se convierte. Divierte a la gente, se queda rolado. Camino sin cuidado, me imagino que ando bien camuflajeado. Desde luego me doy cuenta que no estoy suelo, estoy tirado. Sube, sube, suave, suave. Luego me levanto, suelo dirigirme. Firme me mantengo para nada, me detengo. Prendida, perdida, mi vida, que día no tenía guía, ni a la noche, gira mi cabeza a la velocidad de un coche y ahora, dime, dime, dime qué voy a hacer, dime tú, dime tú, uh, uh, uh. Hey, princesita. Ahora le bajo, vente a gozarlo, que el cotorreo apenas va empezando, haciendo desmadre, haciendo relajo, así me divierto y te comparto, parto y reparto, la HB no guardo y muy gustosa, te brindo mi mano, ahora yo te canto, el baile empezó. Y con estilo, a ti te contagio, bailo, no paro, nunca me callo, sigo al camino, al ritmo que yo amo, al ritmo que yo amo.